Alright guys, and welcome back to more Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Trials and Tribulations. And previously we learned a lot of new information regarding the investigation. We discovered a lot of evidence. We discovered a lot of people's names. We found out about Violet, and we found out about T. Gray, the head of the company Tender Lender Loan Company, 42. And she is, we don't know her age, but apparently they're in love. <laughs> And we don't know the age of Lisa Bas Basil. <laughs> Absolutely not a robot. <laughs> She's a damn Hatsune Miku fan. But anyway, here we go. We gotta go to the Criminal Affairs Department, maybe, to go see what the hell's going on with Gumshoe. This, the, you know, actually talk to Gumshoe and present all this new evidence we got. January 7th, Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. The main server just went up in smoke! Why the heck isn't a press conference set up yet? The superintendent's here already! Yeah! And there's a problem with the internet too! I already told you to stop using your computer, Chief! But I'm watching videos online! I'm catching up on my Asian soap operas! It's gonna have to wait, Chief! I'm throwing the switch! No! Just when Soom Young Guy was about to confess to his son's hot to track girlfriend! <laughs> wow, this place is really buzzing! Something must be going down. Something big. <gasps> what are you guys doing here? Detective Gumshoe! You can't be here right now. You'll be roped into the briefing if you stay. Huh? We've got big problems here. Why? What's going on? It's a virus! A virus! A virus? There's a virus ripping through the precinct's computer system. But I really need to ask you some questions. Okay, I'm gonna say this once, so listen up. Yes, no matter how poor you get, never borrow money from a place like this, you hear? Um, okay. If you got money trouble, just go on a diet of instant noodles and hang in there. We're not talking, we're not thinking about borrowing money, detective. We want information. Oh, is that all? Well... <clears throat> Let's see. Tender Linder is considered to be even fishier than the average l illegal loan shark. Even fishier than the average illegal loan shark. And it seems it ran into trouble just recently. Those guys have been pretty heavy handed calling it in all their depths. Really? Really? Don't go poking your nose around in their business, pal. You'll really regret it if you, re if you upset that lady. Alright, I get the picture. Hey, wait a minute. What did he just say? That lady? He must have been there recently. Who's this lady he's talking about? We better find out what the story is with this lady. Computer viruses. So what exactly is a computer virus, Detective Gumshoe? I don't know. What? Look, I just go with the flow, right? And here I thought detectives were supposed to be somewhat knowledgeable. What's with that face, pal? You think you know what a virus is? Yeah, Nick, do you? A computer virus? Sure. I mean, only in simple terms, of course. Really? Wow, you know everything, Professor Nick. Yeah, I'm gonna call you Dr. Wright right now. <laughs> that sounds cool. Don't you agree, Dr. Wright? Why do I get the feeling they're making fun of me? Okay, fine. I'm no expert, but I can at least explain the basics of basics to you, too. What's a virus? I'll let you know. A virus is a program that gets inside a computer and causes damage. Damage? You mean it makes the machine go boom and explode? No, the damage is, um, well, it's all internal. So, the insides go boom. Imagine all the case data you've stored on your PC here in your station. A virus could wipe out all that. That's the kind of damage I'm talking about. Whoa, that's scary, yeah. And what's even more scary is that viruses are infectious. Infectious? Most computers are connected together on a network, right? A virus can move from one machine to another over the network, so the virus just keeps spreading faster and faster. Just like a real virus. But Nick, why would anyone want to make a program like that? Yeah, it, it takes ages to type in all that data. Why would you want to destroy it, pal? People don't affect their own machines. They, they send the virus to someone else's. That's horrible. Oh, I get it. It's like you sneezing on Godot so he catches the cold. Right. Then he wouldn't be able to turn up in court because he'd be too sick. You really shouldn't do stuff like that, Nick. It's wrong. Who, what, where, when, and why did the conversation jump to me? Anyway, that's what a computer virus is. A bad program that causes damage. And 
And all the different viruses have names, right? I kind of feel like I've heard the name of the virus we've caught somewhere before. The name of the virus? MC Bomber, I'm guessing. I feel like I've heard of it before, too. Any money is it called MC Bomber? No, 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 don't move. We gotta stuff the show. Hey, do you know this girl right here with the bandage on her head? She works for Tinder, 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 That's the girl who works over at Tinder, Tinder. You want to stay away from her, okay? I mean it. She does look kind of unforgiving, doesn't she? That should be the least of your worries, pal. What's that supposed to mean? What could be worse? Whoa, that's the name on that damn bill, that repair bill. Her name's Viola. She's the only grandfather to... Bruto. Varini. Kata Varini. Do you know who that is, Nick? Kata Varini. The Varinis. Never heard of them. Brutal Kata Varini is the boss of the Kata Varini family. Damn. The Varini. That's one scary sounding name. We can't touch them. They're way too powerful for the police. But you're thinking of taking them on, aren't you? No, I don't remember ever saying I was going to. I better get some info out of Gumshoe about this family. So, here's what I'm thinking. Mr. Tiger got in an accident with this girl, Violet. He was driving, I guess they were driving in the same car. He got in an accident. That's why he's riding a scooter now, not his damn car. Cadaverinis. I'm not sure if I really want to get involved in this, but who are the Cadaverinis? Who are they? A scary bunch of people, that's who. You're a cop and you're scared? What's that about? Trust me, it doesn't matter if you're a cop or a kid, these guys are scary. They've got some serious clout in the criminal underworld. We can't even touch them. They've got too much moolah. Moolah? As in, they pretty much control all the cash on the city's black market. Damn. The black market, huh? And that includes Tinder Lender, I take it? Sure, no one stands up to brutal Cadaverini, and I mean no one. Interesting. So your boy Tigre might be scared of him. So Viola's the granddaughter of some mafia boss then. And everyone knows how much Bruto loves his little girl. She means everything to him. So how did she end up at Tenderlander? I don't know, pal. But I heard she and the boss of the Tenderlander are pretty tight. Tight? That's what it said in the file I read related to Maggie's case. Sounds like a pretty important clue. Maybe we gotta present something else to him. You know, let's actually present that uh, paper that had MC Bomber on it. Is this the one? Or is this the one? Hey, this is the one. Let's present this. No, 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 screw that! Better yet, let's give him the CD if we can. MC Bomber. Detective Gumshoe, um, about this. What? I'm trying to concentrate on Maggie and the virus right now, so I- OH! This is it! That stupid name! I remember it now! I thought so. Here it comes. Don't j don't just nod to yourself and keep me in the dark, Nick. What's going on? It's okay, Maya. You don't have to cry about it. <laughs> the name scribbled on that sports paper and written on that CD. That's the name of the virus! MC Palmer! What? Yeah, the virus that's just infected every computer in the station! It's MC Bomber. Can you give us any more details, please? Oh, did it get? Digga, do, digga, 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 do, do da, do ga, doos, do ga, do ga, do. <laughs> we already knew about the MC Bomber virus from a while back. <laughs> a group of criminals issued a series of demands to the head honchos of law enforcement. They threatened to release the virus if their demands weren't met. Who are they? I don't know. Some hot shots from the criminal underworld would be my guess. And now the virus has been released, huh? Yeah. It's in every computer and every pub uh, public office in the city. Everyone's going nuts. The hope are hopping around like they're dancing at a carnival. 
all this stuff with criminals and viruses, it almost feels like we're in a sci-fi movie. Apparently, the programmer who made the virus was a real genius. The focus right now is on the tracing, is on tracing the route of the virus on the black market. You mean someone put this virus up for sale? Yep. And because this one's so powerful, they're estimating its price tag was in the millions of dollars. In the millions, a virus can be worth that much. Huh. This is what I'm thinking now. Glenn L. Glenn made the damn MC Bomber virus to pretty much get himself out of debt or whatever. Because he needed the money, right? He needed the money, so he made the MC Bomber. The thing is, he was going to meet with El Tigre, right? He was going to meet with El Tigre, whatever his damn name is, while he was waiting there with MC Bomber. And the thing is, he was like listening to the radio and then he realized he won half a million dollars. He's like, oh shit, I don't need to give you this MC Bomber now. I don't need to give this shit to you. I ain't about to become a criminal. I'm about to take this money and I'm about to take this MC Bomber. He was like, you know what? I feel you. I feel you. But drink this coffee though. He drank a coffee and then he died. So in reality, had he not won a half a million dollars, maybe he would have still been alive. I don't know. That's just a theory at this moment. That's just a theory. Ah, oh, I can't believe it. I almost forgot the most important thing, and that is, you know, the lunchbox. How did everything go? Oh, man. A, a lunchbox? You remember the weenies? I hate weenies. Oh, yeah, those weenies. So, how did my weenies taste when they went down the hatch? Um, well, it was delicious. Yeah, that's what she said, really? Oh, well, not exactly. Don't worry about it, pal. I figured something would happen, so I came prepared. Prepared? What do you mean? I made a jumbo lunchbox. Oh, do me a favor again, huh, pal, and deliver this. This sure is heavy. This is sure a heavy burden in more ways than one. I can just imagine Maggie's little eyes sparkling with joy when you bring her that. Weenies again, Nick. Tell me we don't have to eat all these, too. Get him shoes a lunchbox. Give it to Maya. Again. I really can't any I can't eat anymore. So we might at this moment actually have enough information to go break those side blocks. But I think the first thing I want to do is to actually go back to the detention center and give her this food. And she's not even at the detention center. Wow. I'm kind of salty. So what we're going to do is see if we can go break those psyche locks off of uh, Hasuni Miku. No, we just came back from here. We're going to go to the detention center. Move again to Trade BN. And then we got to go to Vitamin Square. And then we'll go to that place. Or we can go straight to blue screens from here. Hey Hatsune Miku, I'm here to break your psyche lock. Get ready for me to present my Makatama so I can break your locks. Like to break those locks. <laughs> Glenn's trouble. So how about you tell me what kind of trouble Mr. Elg was in? I'm sorry, but we don't deal with the troubleshooting here. Something to do with this ticket right here? Think that we already did this like two episodes ago, so I'm gonna be skipping through a lot of this dialogue, like the first three presentations or your first three things we did. It was the horse racing tickets. Take that! Take that! Take it! Take it! You sweating now, girl? You sweating? Yep, yep, yep. But if you win, there's no problem, is there? And Glenn had a winning ticket for half a million dollars, but it's hard to imagine how he could have been in trouble. Blah, 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 it's true, but that was his stroke, that was his first stroke of luck. He went in deep before that. Deep trouble, what do you mean? It was with someone or something more terrifying and ferocious. El Tigre. Take that! Fury El Tigre. The boss of a loan office called Tinder Lender. Tinder Lender? People with businesses should think harder before naming their offices. Like you're one to talk. Well? Blue screens ink? <laughs> well, what do you think? Our firm is doing very well at the moment. 
I don't think we need to borrow money. No, no, no. I mean about Mr. Elg. You think Elg, or Glynn, has something to do with Furio Tigre? Yes. I'm sorry, I don't know of any connection between the two of them. Really? Because I got proof that Mr. Elg and the Tiger knew each other. So I showed MC Bomber? That's not it? Well, what do you think? I'm not sure. Let's ask one of the programmers. Excuse me, can you answer this man's query, please? That data queue that manages system tax for troubleshooting requires the multi-taxing simulation for local variables to put in the sleep mode to the data the transmission of the active nose of the blue do get do. So I'm afraid that is the situation. You're not paying attention, Basil. Not even slightly. What was all that mobile jumble? It's actually as my program has explained. I'm guessing I picked the wrong piece of evidence. Glenn had a lot of friends, Mr. Wright. You think Glenn has something to do with... Yes, the MC Bomber, yo! Really, because I have proof... Oh, the calendar, maybe. The meet with the tiger. There we go. Yeah, I overlooked that. Furio Tigre, aka the tiger, is the boss of a loan office called Tender Linder. This is who Mr. Elg met with the with on the day of his murder. And the only thing a loan shark would talk with him about would be his debt. No! No! It's true that Glenn had racked up so... Uh, he racked up quite a bit of that debt from his gambling habit. About a hundred thousand dollars, I think. A hundred thousand dollars? God dang! But I heard he won the lottery, so he should have been in the clear. Shane Maggie couldn't get a bit of that good luck. Oh, okay. So, the guy got lucky and won the lottery. But what if he hadn't won? What was his plan then? Yup! Well, this isn't easy to say, but he said he would use his talents to repay the money. His talents? I suspect he was talking about programming. What computer program is worth $100,000? Perhaps you good people should leave so I can get back to my work. I'm so close to cracking her. The program in question, was it by any chance? This? MC Bomber! MC Bomb Bomb Bomber. This is the virus that's infecting computers worldwide as we speak. MC Bomber. No! <laughs> oh no! Oh yeah. We'll return to more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations next time. Gig 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 gig.